Okay, so the Mitsunobu reaction. The Mitsunobu reaction is a reaction that takes place between a primary or a secondary alcohol and a weakly acidic pronucleophile. So your weak acid, like you'll see in the title screen, doesn't just have to be a carboxylic acid, although benzoic acid will do just fine. It could also be a thioacetic acid, where this oxygen is a sulfur, or it could be something like hydrozoic acid, where you have N3 or nitrogen double bond, nitrogen double bond nitrogen uh, as your pronucleophile. The reaction mechanism happens the same. This just needs to be a weak acid. So a pKa somewhere lower than 10. The other things in the reaction then, so you have your secondary alcohol, and then you have this molecule here, which is called diethyl azo dicarboxylate, or DEAD, DEAD for short. The modern reaction isn't usually done with this material because it's kind of uh, subject to exploding. Um, it's not stable. Um, for somewhat obvious reasons, if it decomposes, you'll get a molecule of nitrogen, two carbon dioxides. So it's been replaced with other very similar looking things with slightly more bulk on either end to pad out the molecule and make it that little bit less sensitive. So DEAD, and then the other part is triphenylphosphine. So PPH3 or triphenylphosphine. And as you'll have seen in other reactions, if triphenylphosphine is not acting as a ligand, then it's gonna start off life acting as a nucleophile. And this whole reaction starts without ever involving the alcohol or the acid. The first thing that happens in this reaction is that triphenylphosphine acts as a nucleophile and attacks this nitrogen-nitrogen double bond. So form a new nitrogen-phosphorus bond with that pair of electrons and break the nitrogen-nitrogen double bond and put the negative charge onto the nitrogen. And it's next to a carbonyl, so it can resonate up onto the carbonyl, but because it's a nitrogen, the uh, distribution between the enolate form or what would be the enolate form and the ne negative charge in the nitrogen is much less towards the enolate form. So it's fine to just draw it with the negative charge on the nitrogen. But with all that to start with, this is how the reaction begins. So let's draw that out. I will say I'm gonna get rid of the, di the, azo car um, the ethyl carboxylate part because this molecule is big enough. So I'm gonna replace those with or groups. So let's draw that out. Nitrogen, one of the bonds is gone. And now, like I said, there's an or sticking out of both sides. What else have I got there? Well, our phosphorus still has three phenyl rings or three benzene rings sticking out of it. We still have our carboxylic acid. I'm gonna draw that back in, hasn't changed. Benzoic acid. And our alcohol is still floating around in the reaction. So let's not worry about that. Well, what did we do? We took the pair of electrons that was on the phosphorus and made a new phosphorus nitrogen bond and we took this pair of electrons and put them onto the nitrogen. Nitrogen with a negative charge, it's gonna be a good base. Carboxylic acid, weak acid. Acid plus base, gonna get proton transfer. So that's the next thing to draw in. One other thing that I've left out, which I can obviously tell if I'm following my rules, uh, is that I've got a negative charge here, but there's no net charge over there, and it's because I've left out a positive charge, which happens when you take the lone pair from the phosphorus and share it into a bond. Okay, so, that's going to deprotonate that and the negative charge is going to end up resonating on the carboxylate. What's that going to look like? Well, what do we have now? We have everything that's unchanged. So we now have our carboxylate. And we still have our alcohol. And now I'm going to draw our alcohol in over this side. And I'm going to keep drawing the stereochemistry in because that'll be important later. So there's the phosphorus activated, waiting to be attacked, and that nitrogen would like to leave. Well, phosphorus can have more than five bonds to it. So let's just draw in that much and see where it takes us. The carboxylate is just gonna act as a spectator for now. And we're gonna form a new oxygen phosphorus bond. So let's draw all of that out down here. Um, so we have that oxygen um, still bonded to a hydrogen. Phosphorus here, still bonded to a nitrogen, nitrogen, 
bar on one side, bar on the other side. This is nitrogen and hydrogen bond, and we have our carboxylate still. So, what did I do? I took one of these lone pairs and I made a new oxygen phosphorus bond, and now that has a positive charge on it, and the phosphorus, which still, of course, has its three benzene rings, is still there. So, what have we done? Well, all of a sudden, we have created a situation where phosphorus is in a state where it's got five bonds. This is not going to last too long. This proton is not going to stay attached to oxygen with a positive charge on it, so it's going to lose a proton. This is going to take its electrons back, because now this has a lone pair that it can have put into an oxygen-phosphorus double bond. Uh, this is going to leave, and it's going to take up another H+. So if I draw in the lone pair that was on that, and I draw in another H+, which doesn't have to be this one, doesn't have to be this proton, it could be from some other source in the reaction, another molecule of carboxylic acid. So it doesn't have to be an intramolecular proton transfer, it can be an intermolecular proton transfer. But in any event, it's going to accept a proton. And we'll let that proton go in exchange for that proton and see where we are. Well, now what do we have? Oxygen is now bonded to a phosphorus and the phosphorus, once again, has a positive charge. And that can resonate between an oxygen phosphorus single bond or an oxygen phosphorus double bond with a positive charge there. This still has its three benzene rings attached to it. Our diethylazo dicarboxylate is now reduced. That was a double bond, it's now a single bond, it's now a hydrazine, it's not going to do anything else in this reaction. And our carboxylic acid, which I'm going to draw in over here, has its part to play now. So, if you look at what we have here, we have oxygen, which you can draw out in that form, or if you want, you could draw it out as an oxygen phosphorus double bond. But either way, this oxygen is very much pulling the electrons out of this bond. It's very activated. It's an excellent leaving group, because if we kick it out with that pair of electrons, we'll be left with triphenylphosphine oxide. This is an all right nucleophile. It's not a fantastic nucleophile, but because this is such a good leaving group, it can now attack. So let's make that happen. It's going to attack SN2. This is going to leave as this attacks. And what are we left with? Well, over here we have triphenylphosphine oxide. Our hydrazine we're going to ignore because it's uh, not going to do anything else in this reaction. And as for the rest of the molecule, well, this has attacked on this side and formed a new oxygen carbon bond. And because it's an SN2 reaction, it's going to proceed with perfect inversion of stereochemistry. So if I redraw it out like this, then you can see what the final product is going to be. I've taken an alcohol and an acid and produced an ester. But that ester has exactly the opposite stereochemistry at this chiral center. Because it depends on this activated intermediate, this can't react again, so you can't flip the stereocenter again, you can't get scrambling. And so it's a really nice way of using mild reagents. Neither of these are strong acids or strong bases, it's a mild reaction conditions, to take your oxygen and turn it into a good leaving group and in one pot kick it out SN2 reaction inversion of stereochemistry. So that's the Mitsunobu reaction. Starts off life with phosphorus as a nucleophile, creates your intermediate, deprotonate the carboxylic acid, uh, use your oxygen in your alcohol as a nucleophile to finish reducing the hydrazine, kick the hydrazine out and ignore it, and then your oxygen, because it's now bonded to a positive phosphorus with a positive charge on it, is a really good leaving group. So your weak nucleophile comes along and forms a new oxygen carbon bond, and you end up with inversion of stereochemistry. If you have any questions, post them below or ask me in class. I hope that's been helpful. That's all for now. Bye.